So, but it's, I guess it's not a question right now if we are doing the central node biopsy because there's a wide consensus, right? So the question is, you know, what to do with patients if the central node is positive, if there we need a completion of adenectomy. And just to say it in the very beginning, I guess it's very important to emphasize that the patients who have macrometastasis, palpable lymph nodes, nodes which are seen in the lymph node sonography or in CT or MRI scanning, you know, will be resected anyway with a completion of lymphadenectomy. That's not the issue. It's a tiny positive central nodes and the question if we need a completion of lymphadenectomy and this is particular uh, being discovered in MSLT2 and in a German study. And you know, uh, Mike, would you like to give a comment on your you know, gut feeling about the data and uh, if this is changing the rules in your center? Well, I, I think, again, it's part of the transformation we're seeing in the care of melanoma patients. And, you know, I think we'll talk in a little bit about sort of the adjuvant therapy trials that have been completed. And we have to remember that those trials were completed in the era when patients were all getting completion lymph node dissection. Uh, and so, you know, we're moving into an era now where we're offering adjuvant therapies to patients who are undergoing sentinel lymph node biopsy only without a completion lymph node dissection. And I think we're all going to be sort of looking at how that sort of impacts our risks of sort of local and regional relapses. But absolutely, I think, again, you know, it's very standard now for us to do the sentinel lymph node biopsy would reinforce the idea that absolutely one millimeter or thicker, but certainly consideration for patients with thinner melanomas but with high risk features, certainly ulceration. I think I think the other one that's quite good to remember is actually the signs of regression, because with regression you don't actually know what the original Breslow thickness was, and that's some, something else that we look at when we're talking about whether to do the sentinel lymph node biopsy. But you're right, I agree with the other panelists, it's very unusual for us now to do a completion lymph node dissection after a positive sentinel lymph node so, biopsy. So Axel, you don't mind if I jump in here a little bit, because um, I, I think there's some things that we need to talk about that even though that most people would consider that the sentinel lymph node biopsy is a staging procedure. In, in actuality, the, the completion lymph node dissection trials, both in, 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 in Europe and in, in, and in the U.S., showed that there was no survival advantage of doing the completion lymph node dissection. But those trials also showed us that the patients who have additional positive nodes, those patients are a different biology than patients who just have disease limited to the sentinel lymph node. Even though we used to think that sentinel lymph node biopsy was just a staging procedure, the MSLT1 data would show us that removing the sentinel lymph node, particularly if that was the only site of disease in the nodes, was actually therapeutic. That there's a survival advantage for the node positive patients compared to patients who develop clinical nodal disease. So the MSLT1 trial did show us that there's some survival advantages by removing the disease early. So the concept of removing lymph node disease early has actually been proven as being, and has, has an impact on outcome. But the completion lymph node dissection doesn't provide any additional advantage in terms of overall survival and provides only uh, maybe improved regional disease control and possibly some in information related to staging. But there may be other surrogates for outcome that you may not have to need the staging information to make decisions about adjuvant therapy. Like the burden of disease in the sentinel lymph node may be a very important piece of information that helps our medical oncology Absolutely. colleagues make decisions about adjuvant therapy. So we may not even need to do the completion node dissection to get the staging information. <clears throat> All right, so your conclusion is it adds some prognostic information. It's a very sensitive tool for um, evaluating patients if they are candidates for adjuvant treatment in the future, and we will touch this later. And also, it has some theoretic implication, but only the central node staging, but not the completion of lymphadenectomy. So, so, but is this impacting your guidelines in the United States and in France, so in the NCCN guidelines? Because in Germany, we will have a discussion in the upcoming months if the German study has been published. The rule is we can only discuss fully published manuscripts for changing guidelines. And I can tell you that will be a tough dis uh, discussion in Germany if we proceed uh, uh, with completion of lymphadenectomy for cellular node positive patients in the light of two negative large-sized randomized clinical trials. So the NCCN guidelines in the U.S. are about to be published from a, a meeting that was, that was in June. Certainly, uh, the omission of completion lymph node dissection will be part of the guidelines as an option for patients and, and surgeons. But there'll also be an option 
to discuss completion lymph node dissections with, 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 with patients as well. But clearly the guidelines are changing, and I think surgeons in general in the U.S. have adopted this change and this transformation. I, I think it's very important to remember where we came from and how much progress we've made. And I've been treating melanoma for 30 years, and the complexion of the disease that we see is very different. And a lot of that has to do with early diagnosis, but it also has to do with early diagnosis of nodal disease. We don't see gross nodal disease as much as we used to. And I think sentinel lymph node biopsy has been important in changing how patients present with, with more advanced disease. And that's a good thing, and, that, and that's a good thing. And, um, and, and the staging system actually reflects this. The stage one and two patient population does better based on stage migration because we've moved the, the early stage three patients into the next group, and the stage three patients do better because they're mostly yeah. microscopic node positive disease as opposed to gross nodal involvement. We covered the field of surgery, but you know, do you think that the surgery in the future will have a different role because the adjuvant treatment which is coming up and which was recently approved in Europe and the US is relatively strong? So is there, you know, a, a surgery even in patients, you know, with uh, three positive center nodes and not done because we know that the adjuvant treatment is so strong. So is that, do you think do you envision any changes in the near future of surgery? I'm not talking about bulky disease. So, so this is a little Mary, bit. The question is if you can go home at 3 o'clock, uh, 3 p.m. Well, I, would, I would never go home at 3, <laughs> at 3 o'clock anyways, probably. But um, um, it's really interesting because it's somewhat of a data-free zone. I mean, you say that's very intensive therapy and it's very effective. So, but the therapies, whether it's immune therapy or targeted therapy, has only been tested in the context of patients having completion lymph node dissections for positive sentinel nodes. So we really don't know how effective these therapies are in treating nodal disease. You can extrapolate from the data that if, there, if there's a systemic response, that the likelihood is, is that it's also treating whatever disease is left behind in the microscopic level in the patients who have not undergone a completion node dissection. But I, I think it's pretty clear that the completion node dissection added nothing in terms of survival to the adjuvant therapy trial. So that's pure drug, and, uh, and certainly in my estimation. So um, we're going to find out. I mean, we will find out how, how, how effective these therapies are uh, in terms of uh, controlling nodal disease. And we'll certainly see patients who will have will have nodal disease as their first site of recurrence, and I'm hoping that's their only site of disease when they, when they have recurrence, and then they'll be eligible for neoadjuvant trials. But that's another question. Yeah. How effective are these trials going to be after they've seen adjuvant therapy? We will discuss therapy? it. Be yeah. patient, okay. Merrick. We will yeah. discuss <laughs> okay. it.